When I was young, I was impatient to grow up, because I believed that grown-ups could get to do whatever they wanted. There was one time, though, when I was a teenager, I began to realize that that was not the case. In fact, grown-ups had to do a lot of things they did not want to do. I remember mentioning that to my mother. Why should I want to grow up if I don't get to do the things I want? The look of dismay that went over her face has stayed with me for a long time. Since then, having met a John Fuang, I realized that grown-up life was not as bleak as I had begun to see it. As John Fuang himself had said, John Lee had shown him the brightness of life. And that was what I was learning from John Fuang. But to get that, that brightness does require we do a lot of things that we don't like doing, the things that we believe will give long-term benefits, and for which we have to sacrifice our immediate desires, our immediate pleasures. That's one of the reasons why the practice requires conviction. After all, the Buddha can't take nirvana out to show us. Nobody can take it out. John Mahabhava once said that if those who attain nirvana could take it out and show it, nobody else in the world would want anything else. That's all they would want. But it can't be shown. It can be talked about. And we can see the good influence in the lives of the people who have practiced. But that's all on conviction. But it's a strength we need. When the Buddha talks about conviction, it comes down to three things. One, who you believe. Two, what you believe. And then three, what you do as a result. Last night we talked about the four factors for stream entry. So who you believe in that case would be people of integrity. What you believe is the true Dharma. And what you do as a result is you practice appropriate attention and you practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. Now there's another list of stream entry factors. These are the factors of stream entry, or that constitute what it means to obtain stream entry. And even if you're not there yet, it gives you an idea of what kind of conviction you want to confirm. You use conviction in four things, or in four ways. It gets perfected, it gets confirmed at stream entry, but you try to develop it all the way through, all the way up to stream entry. The first three factors are conviction in the Buddha, conviction in the Dharma, conviction in the Sangha. The Buddha is specifically conviction in his awakening, that he really was able through his own efforts to attain the end of suffering. And that, that the Dharma he taught was well taught. In other words, he knew what he was talking about. He was a reliable person, honest and observant. with very high standards. As he once said, the secret to his awakening was one, an unwillingness to rest content with skillful qualities, and two, an unwillingness to give up in the effort, no matter what it would take. So that's the kind of person we have faith in, we have confidence in. It means also, of course, that we try to develop those qualities in ourselves. So that's who you have faith in, or who you have conviction in. And then there's also the Sangha, the Noble Sangha, the people who have practiced 
People who practice well practice straightforwardly, practice for the sake of knowledge, practiced masterfully. We chant every night, every night. We have conviction in them, in the idea that it's not just the Buddha who can gain awakening, other people can follow his teachings and gain awakening as well. That gives hope for us. Because the basic message there is that if they can do it, we can do it. They're human beings, we're human beings. This is something that is possible. As Venerable Ananda once said, that, it, that is a form of conceit, but it's a conceit to be developed. It leads ultimately to the end of conceit. In other words, to the stage where you don't need to compare yourself with anyone else anymore. Because you've found the ultimate happiness. Well, why compare? So it's a good conceit to develop. So those are who we believe, or who we have conviction in. Then there's the Dharma, what we believe. And it's basically telling us we live in a world where awakening is possible, and we are people who can attain it. That's the message that underlies all the Buddhist teachings. It's kind of an unspoken message many times, but simply the fact that he cared enough to teach. As he once said, if people could not develop skillful qualities, there'd be no reason for him to teach. If they couldn't abandon unskillful qualities, there'd be no reason for him to teach. We do have that choice. We do have that ability. We do have that freedom. That's the assumption that underlies all the Dharma. So we may not know that we have that freedom after all. No one can prove freedom of choice. No one can prove determinism. But if you take freedom of choice as a working hypothesis, and you take as a working hypothesis the assumption that you do have the potential within you, you have what it takes, then you're not cutting yourself off. You're opening doors. You may not know how far the doors can go, but at least you're not closing things off. You're not closing off those possibilities. That's what we have faith in, what we believe. And that's the question of what we do. In this case, we practice the precepts that are pleasing to the Noble Ones. As they're just described in the canon, they're untorn, unspattered, unspotted. In other words, the five precepts, we hold to them all the time, in all circumstances. But at the same time, we don't glorify ourselves for our precepts. We don't look down on others. In other words, we don't create ourselves or fashion ourselves around our precepts. We do them because we know they're good for us. And we value the precepts. I've been alerted recently there are some people who say that the traditions that hold to the Vinaya are suffering from pride and conceit, which is a sign that they're not awakened and therefore they're their teachings are no good. You hold to the precepts. When you haven't gotten to stream entry yet, there will be an element of pride. There will be an element of conceit to keep you going. Just make sure you don't let it turn into a club to beat other people. But there is a sense of honor that goes with following the precepts. You know, there are times when you could break the precepts and you could benefit and you could probably get away with it. But you take it as a point of honor that you won't. And to whatever extent there is a sense of self in that point of honor, to the 
the extent that you need it, go ahead and develop it. In ancient India, there were branches of Buddhism that actually would get their students to break the precepts in horrible ways to get rid of their pride. But that's actually very destructive. It destroys a healthy element in the personality, a healthy element that's required in the practice, that you have a sense of honor. And once you've reached stream entry and your precepts are solid, in other words, you've seen the principle of karma confirmed for yourself that, yes, the Buddha was awakened. He did know what he's talking about. There is a deathless, and it is the end of suffering. The Dharma he taught was well taught. The Sangha has practiced well. And you've seen that it was your own lack of skillful actions that it concealed this from you. You would never intentionally want to break the precepts again. At that point, you don't need any conceit to maintain them. What sense of self this remains is required for the practice of concentration, for the practice of discernment. Here again, there will be that element of conceit that Ananda talks about. If the noble ones can do it, if the awakened ones can do it, I can do it too. So you recognize that conceit, but you don't need it around your precepts anymore at that point. Until you reach that point, hold on to your sense of honor. So this is what conviction means for us. We're convinced in the possibility of awakening. That is something human beings can do. We're convinced that we can do it. That the path has been cleared. And then we actually carry through with those beliefs. The kind of people who say, well, I believe X and believe Y, but their actions don't fall in line with it. You wonder what they really believe. Your beliefs have to come out in your actions. So be careful to make sure that your question of who you believe and what you believe is really solid. And that it'll show in what you do. And that's when your conviction is complete, and that's when it's a strength. A strength that they can keep you going even in the, the downs of the practice. It's not up, ever up, up, up all the time. There will be downs. There will be fallow periods. But keeping your conviction strong is what will see you through.